Okay, it seems. Right. Uh, thank you, for, uh, Dr. Thompson, for your nice lecture. We'll move to the next. Uh, next is uh, Dr. Hani Al Hashmi. He is the director of Oncology Center in King Fahad Specialist Hospital, Dammam, and he is the mo motivator for excellence in patient care, whether within the center, interaction with other centers in the region, and other centers even in outside of the region. So he will be good to speak about future hematology healthcare model in Saudi Arabia. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. S uh, Chairman. I would like to thank the organizing committee and Dr. Firas in specific to bring a different flavor to the meeting. So uh, since the morning we were talking about patient-related and medicine-specific uh, uh, context. So what I'm trying to bring during the next few slides, in the next 20 minutes, is actually a perspective of strategy. So what is strategy uh, uh, has to do with our patient and how us in this room, as actually a caregiver and as actually a very important stakeholder, will make a difference in the future of those patients, and not only the patient, but also the community. Uh, most of my presentation will be based on our recent national cancer uh, care strategy uh, and how that will align with the hematology field, which we all belong to. And hopefully, uh, at the end of the presentation, we'll give you some uh, details about uh, where we are hoping to get to. Uh, Few things that I'll speak about during the presentation is actually the current state in, in Saudi Arabia as far as number goes. I'll talk a little bit about the best practices that we actually were trying to align with and our future uh, vision and strategic objective. I'll put as, actually hematology as, uh, as a field that we are all actually uh, engaged in. And uh, I'll end with a few slides about actually the actual business case of doing th such uh, strategy and implementing such strategy in the future. So what, you, what you're going to hear is more about uh, numbers and strategy rather than patients and outcome and survival, kaplan meyer curve, and all those things. So uh, I hope that would actually doesn't, uh, uh, well, this is actually a number two. So ho all the numbers should make, make uh, uh, the story very well uh, said. So uh, cancer is actually very, very concerning thing globally. Uh, if we're talking about Saudi Arabia, we're part of the world. So it's, again, it's a growing concern in our country as well. Uh, and if you, talk, if you look at uh, all-cause mortality and death, uh, cancer still is actually panning out as one of the very important ones in Saudi Arabia. Uh, so 7% of the death within our country is related to, to cancer. And if you talk about disability-adjusted life years, and if you believe the statistic that we have, uh, uh, on a personal level, we, I know that we have uh, not completely accurate data, but we are very close to being accurate in our data collection, still actually number two after cardiovascular disease. So it's still a major burden on our society. And, and something needs to be taken to address this and maybe to improve the, the care provided to our patient and also uh, as a total to the community. Uh, healthcare expenditure, I'm sure during the day we talked about the cost efficiency and the cost of every new medication that comes about uh, is definitely larger than the cost of the medication that was actually a year before. So, so cost is continuing to, uh, continue to be an issue. Uh, as an overall healthcare exped expenditure, if you look between 12 and 15, uh, globally, uh, and uh, actually in, in the very important countries through the world, it actually went from 1.5 to 2 percent. But if you look at cancer specific within the same countries during the same period of time, it went up by 9 percent. Uh, significantly higher than any other field in medicine in, in, in our daily life in the hospitals. Uh, this is not different from what we see in Saudi Arabia. We're part of this, so this is actually what we see in our uh, daily practice. And the vast majority of that is us because we're providing better care. So we, our patients get diagnosed early, they live longer, they have better medicine, and better technique and better technology, uh, thanks to everybody that contributed to this. Uh, but that comes with the cost uh, financially and the, on the communities. Uh, the very important things related to cancer is actually the global economical impact of cancer. Uh, if you come to an area where it's actually uh, a patient doesn't come to the clinic by himself, it comes with four or other five members, uh, that impact economically is actually uh, something can be measured. And it has been measured in different society. Uh, for example, in the US, it's actually about $900 billion. And it is not different from what we see in Saudi Arabia. And more of our cultural uh, things comes into, into actually the clinic, where we see families of five, 10 people coming to talk about one patient uh, uh, specifically. Some of those pay, uh, the caregiver were actually 
get time off work, some of them leave work to care for their loved one. So that's, that's, that's something that uh, needs to be taken into consideration. And uh, hematology is not different from oncology. So if you come early, your actually disease control is much better. You don't have that comorbidity and complexity of you as if you come late. Uh, cost is actually a function of that as well. So it's going to cost less if you come early than if you come late. And it's, it's uh, something that applies also to hematology. More so in oncology, it's true, but uh, in hematology we see that as well. Uh, so when we uh, built this strategy, there was actually a lot of people involved in this, not only healthcare providers, but also finance, digital regulator, uh, and uh, workforce from all different specialties, not only uh, practicing physician, but pathologists, radiologists, radiation therapists. Everybody was involved in this as, as actually main key, uh, key stakeholders. Three stages that we went through, we wanted to make sure that we know the existing uh, capability and the existing current state. The future aspiration, this is actually a talk that happened with the patients and with actually caregivers' uh, uh, involvement to make sure that we're actually catering for the community rather than for the practitioner. And then we, at the end, we articulated this into a nice uh, uh, statement, vision statement, strategic objective, a number of initiatives that I'll take you through in a minute. Uh, this is the journey that our team went through. It's about 15, uh, it's actually about 18 months in total. So from the day we started this uh, uh, workforce until we end up with a nice, with the final document. So you see the initial, there was actually a benefit from the previous uh, document that was uh, uh, done in the past about cancer strategy in Saudi Arabia. The one that was done before was 10 years ago. We used every single document that was talking about cancer and we used it uh, specifically to address what was actually addressed in the past and what is the current uh, and the future aspiration of healthcare is going to be. Uh, we interviewed a lot of people. We went to every single unit and every single place in the country, so not only in the major cities, Riyadh, Jeddah, the Man, Mecca, but we went all the northern area and all the southern area and east and west, every single area. Uh, we interviewed not only physician and, care and, and, and provider, but we interviewed family and patients and, uh, and community uh, uh, organization. Uh, we had a lot of uh, uh, um, surveys that were sent to everybody to get actually their actually input into what's going to come in the final uh, document. Uh, many, 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 many review committee was done during the whole period of time. Uh, to take, to summarize everything that was done over a year time, uh, this is what the current state within our country uh, with the boxes that you see uh, going from the whole journey for the patient from the prevention and awareness all the way to the last phase, palliative care and post-treatment care, survivorship as an example of the previous presentation. And the shaded boxes that, that you see is actually the area for improvement and the opportunity that we have within our, our actually day-to-day uh, -day business. So in the awareness, we are one of the best country worldwide in hepatitis B vaccination. Uh, that has been going on for, for decades. But uh, if you talk about the others, there is actually room for improvement in every single part of this uh, patient journey. Uh, so with that in mind, we wanted to look at strategy, national strategies of countries uh, that has similar size in terms of uh, population size and similar size as our country in Saudi Arabia. We looked at Sweden, UK, uh, Ontario as an example in Canada, and, and also a number of ACOs, uh, accountable care organizations within the United States. Uh, Flor Florida was one of them. And we, when we reviewed all of them, there was actually a very common theme with, between all of them. So. It was very clear that everybody wanted coordination. Everybody wanted collaboration. There is strong prevention component. There is actually a very clear regulation and policies that has been put in within the strategies. Uh, comprehensive data collection. So data was very important. R&D was very important. So we wanted to make sure that we cater in, in the strategy document on the local need but also we wanted to make sure that we're aligned with an international bodies as well, so at least we can benchmark in the future. Uh, to, the, to cut it short, this is actually at the, at the very end of the, of the journey that we went through. So we came up with this nice vision uh, statement. Uh, together we will work to prevent cancer, uh, ensure timely detection, and high quality services and improve life of those living with and beyond cancer across the kingdom. So anybody who actually lives in the country, not only Saudi national. So we wanted to make sure that it's actually fairly inclusive to everybody who actually lives in this country. Uh, 
And to be able to achieve this, we looked at number of themes that was proposed. There was more than 60 themes to, to, to prioritize. And those six were actually the top on their priority list. So you can see awareness. Uh, so they wanted to enhance awareness and prevention, strengthen the cancer and early detection programs, improve access to quality cancer care, improve quality of life of those living with cancer and beyond, develop and enhance the workforce that we have in, in Saudi Arabia from all point of view, physician, nurses, allied services, labs, uh, and also uh, social and, and other supportive uh, staff, and enable data, enable performance improvement and data collections as well. Uh, so the next one is very, is very busy, but, uh, but this, to translate this into actually reality, uh, at the end of the strategy, by 2030, we want to make sure that we have those strategic objectives uh, to align, uh, to actually implement, to ensure the implementation of our strategy. Fast forward 2030, so this is what we would like to see. Uh, so uh, example of awareness and prevention and screening early detection as the first two themes. Uh, so. Currently, if you talk to anybody who practices oncology in Saudi Arabia, we'll tell you we don't look at the population as an overall risk. We actually treat everybody the same. So everybody is looked after and uh, get the awareness, get the screening at a cancer center rather than actually in the community. So you wanted to cater to actually bring the high risk population to be actually the one that we look after for screening and early detection in the cancer and the center and unit and put back all the awareness and the screening into the community, the primary care clinics, NGOs outreach program and the virtual care, uh, in the prevention and also in the screening. And the early detection definition is actually cancer uh, high risk patients. So those are actually continue to be within, within the cancer unit, cancer centers. So we, to apply that, we wanted to make sure that also it's very easy for people to understand what we're coming from. So there are two definitions that came to be very important. Definition of the surfaces. So what is actually a surface that is a core? And what is a surface that is actually advanced or specialized? And it all depends on the demand. So demand is high, cost is low, and actually complexity typically is low. And demand is low, cost is high, and also the, uh, the complexity pretty much is going to be high. It's fairly dynamic. Things can be core and uh, advanced and then eventually become core as the technology and, uh, and the enablers becomes more easy to find. So, so this, is, this is very important definition for the, for the strategy implementation. So the group at the end actually reviewed the delivery model in different parts of the world. And there were three very important delivery methods. The first one was actually national organization, where the surfaces, the core surfaces, are provided at a cluster level. Definition of cluster is actually a population of certain size and catered for by certain organizations. So core surfaces will be actually provided to the cluster level. And advanced surfaces, typically in this actually uh, framework, is provided at a national level. So uh, National Comprehensive Cancer Center, and the coordination happens through a tumor board that is National Tumor Board. This is an example of Denmark uh, cancer care uh, strategy. Cluster network is another way of looking at this uh, implementation. So again, the core surface provided at a cluster level. Uh, advanced surfaces are provided, again, at the same cluster level and the coordination happened at the same cluster level. Uh, this happens in, in places, uh, many places actually in the US, uh, such as Florida. Uh, the last one is actually regional networking. So you get a cluster level core surfaces, but when you go to advanced surfaces, you actually make sure that you have a regional network. So during, in that regional framework, you actually can cater for more than one cluster to provide an advanced surfaces by which you actually reduce the need to invest at start new uh, specialized services within that area. Uh, this model is actually in Ontario and Canada and in, in, in UK, Sweden. And it was felt to be one of the models that we can actually replicate within Saudi Arabia. And it was actually the recommended way uh, of, of pushing forward this strategy. Uh, how, how, how is our system going to deal with such strategy? In Saudi Arabia, we have multiple providers. We have Ministry of Health as a provider. We have King Faisal as a provider, National Guard as a provider, uh, military as a provider. So everybody is going to be under the same definition of core surface, advanced surface. They'll know exactly what they can provide. And they'll know exactly which 
regional unit that they're going to be part of, of and actually communicate directly with. There will be a referral system that connects every regional center together to, pro to, to ensure that patients receive care whenever they're needed and at the place where they need it to get, uh, uh, to get it from. And also, the private sector is actually a very important part of this uh, uh, any whole journey because they're involved at any stage they are actually interested to be involved as, uh, at a cluster or at a regional or even at a primary care level. And to implement this, it was very clear. We need the collaboration of all the sectors to, uh, to, to build such uh, uh, things in the future because we want to utilize the existing capability rather than building something totally new where you can actually invest in something else and get more fruitful outcome by doing so. So getting to the later part of my presentation, hematology. So as a hematologist, we always think graph numbers and for whatever reason, we like things to be a little bit complicated than usual. So it's as simple as you make it and as difficult as you make it. Uh, so I'll try to make it simple. So this is how we look at our healthcare system on the left side. So we think that we don't have enough of everything and we, mo we want more of everything. But it all depends on what, it's not what you see actually, it's actually what you foresee in the future. If you're actually able to draw something out of what you have currently, you might be able to address things in the future. And it, you can't actually do things unless you believe in it. So we wanted to, to, uh, to communicate this to everybody so at least all of us actually believe in something. Uh, we, we experience this in our life. We think the, it's actually a straight line from our plan to the execution, but this is the reality. Everybody went through this in his own or her life and know exactly that it's never a straight line. So we understand this. We're, we're, we're actually hoping that things will be better than this. But if you don't start, it will never actually, you'll never start. You cannot wait for things to be perfect because life is never perfect. So we just need to move on with our plan. Uh, we want to be fast in actually getting this transformation. Everybody wants it to be fast. The truth is, is uh, fast is important, but more important is actually the persistent and stamina. So we want to be actually as fast as we can, but we want to keep this actually going for the rest of, uh, of our strategy life. Uh, we know there is a lot of challenge in the, in, the, in the future. We know everything that we do today have actually opportunities and also there is actually challenges. But it depends how they look at challenges. So this is Osaka, uh, Japan. If, for those who actually visited this place, they know what they made. So this is their highway. It needed to go through a building. So what they did is actually they rented actually the floor six to floor eight and opened the highway. So the resident is actually highway in that area. So it's always a challenge, it's actually an opportunity. Sometimes we have the resources, but we think that we don't have it. And this is something that we live on a daily basis. It depends how do you look at the resources. It's always there. It depends how you look at it. And the solution is always out of the box. It's never been inside the box. So, so we really need to make sure that we push it into the perspective. So going back to the strategy. So in hematology, we just need strategic alignment. So whatever we're doing at our own level, our own organization, we just need to be in alignment with the strategic objective of the whole country. And, and this is uh, Obama-related thing. So yes, we can. So I think we can. And hopefully, uh, by the end of the presentation, people will be, will be happy to say that, yes, we can. Uh, so putting this into perspective, in hematology perspective, there is 30 for oncology, but those are actually 22 for hematology. So it's less, less, much less. Uh, but if you look at the themes, we have the same thing with the oncology. Uh, less for the awareness because we don't have early detection program for colorectal or for breast and so on, but we still can have things to improve and things to work on as a community. Uh, encounter that happens on the daily basis, but we never listen to the patient, unfortunately. And patient always says, if you compete, you win, I lose, but if we work together, everybody wins. So, and I hope that we will be able eventually to reach into this conclusion because if we collaborate, we get a lot of things done. And that's, that's the acronym of team. So together, everybody achieve more, and hopefully we'll be able to achieve more. Uh, so this is the business case. So when we translated this into numbers, so this is punching the number for in the future, how it would look like. So by applying the strategy, we're hoping to reduce the number of new cases, uh, the projected new cases, depending on applying healthy lifestyle to prevent certain cancer, and actually awareness in the bigger uh, scheme of things rather than awareness during the month off. And also certain vaccination have been shown and approved to 
uh, to, to uh, reduce cancer and prevent cancer. So we know that we can actually prevent certain number of cancer in the future. We're hoping to do so by the strategy. And if you also translate into this as an actual number per treatment, uh, by only changing the cancer mix, you'll be able to reduce not only the number of cases, but also to reduce the cost of the treatment for every patient. So this is uh, an average uh, cost of 1.5, uh, I'm sorry, per patient 252,000 real will go down to 240. So this is, this is a reduction. And also, not only reduction in terms of money, but also improvement in terms of survival. So you'll be able to move from 36 total survival for cancer patients to reaching 77%. So this is patient life that you're going actually to also utilize in the future. Uh, putting things together, it's not only the patient and actually the money, you'll be able to bring back money that is lost from the community. So as an economical impact to the community that we're currently losing, we're losing patients as actually contributing, contributing to the uh, economy of Saudi Arabia. So you're bringing back the patient and the cancer survivor eventually to workforce. So they'll be able to put back something into the workforce. The caregiver where they currently are actually not going to work because they care for their loved one, you'll be able to push them back to the workforce. And also, you reduce the social support needed. And also, as we just heard, it has an impact on mental health as well. So you reduce mental health risks for everybody. And that is going to also translate into numbers and, and, to, and actual benefit in terms of Saudi uh, real. So, so millions and billions, actually. It will be realized in, in, in uh, five or 10 years from now. But you'll see by the 2040, you'll be able to re-bring back to the community 3.4 billion that we're losing today. So hopefully by this, I'll move to soccer. This is actually something that everybody likes to, to see. I hope it works. OK. So Liverpool, Arsenal, anybody cheer for any one of them? OK, so Liverpool, very nice goal. The best goal that you can see. So Mohamed Salah is, is actually a, a hero for Liverpool. And basically what has been done is actually you believe in your ability. So we believe in our ability within the country. So I know that we can do it. And, and definitely others will believe in us like they believe in Mohamed Salah. Uh, so we're all, we're all here today, but I know tomorrow somebody else will be in the, in the chair, somebody else will be taking care of other patients, somebody will be in the ministry position, but definitely the journey will continue and we'll just need to be, keep pushing with it as much as we can say. Uh, to end, uh, I'm what I'm trying to say, if I'm trying to say anything, I'm not saying it's easy, I'm saying that it, it's definitely worth it and thank you very much. Exactly on time, so we have a couple of questions. Uh, so, um, so, if you don't mind, I'm going to start with a question. So, um, thanks for that very ambitious talk. But I think you mentioned one point, and I think that would be a big challenge: is how to work everyone as a one team. Because, as you said, our health system in Saudi Arabia is quite complicated, and multiple sectors, and sometimes they don't talk to each other that much. So. Um, uh, that would be, I think, a major challenge in here. It's just breaking the, the silos, breaking the borders. So I know in Saudi Arabia it's, it's an issue. Uh, but for example, we know that uh, transplant for sickle cell disease is happening in Riyadh. So we've never actually transplanted in the eastern province. We always send them to one center in Riyadh. Uh, to National Guard or actually to, uh, to uh, King Faisal. So this is a small example of what can be done. So it's actually not trying to bring something new totally, rather than utilizing what's available. And that is what we're, we're, we're hoping to do so with, with, uh, with the team approach to business. It's not, uh, it's not easy, I'm sure, but it's, it's something that we're all hoping to work together to achieve. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hanyo, for uh, your usual inspiring talks. Okay. And uh, uh, just have a, a small comment about, or a question, basically. For the preventive, uh, cancer preventive, uh, you know, elements that you've mentioned, do you think it's worthwhile to add um, inherited cancers or uh, people with, uh, you know, germline predisposition? Do you believe that this is uh, a bigger of an issue that need to be included, uh, cert uh, you know, uh, especially in, in, um, in our area, or because I haven't seen it uh, in there? So 
uh, as far as prevention goes, it's actually a bigger thing that uh, include a lot of things. Although in the, in the strategy document, it mentioned specifically breast, colorectal, and HPV, but that's, that's actually uh, the, the most important things that we felt it's actually cost efficient and very economically uh, important and doable at the same time. Other suggestion to be added is, is actually uh, open for, for the community to contribute back to uh, as ideas and, and actually as program that needs support. And I'm sure uh, as, as a whole, that can be done as well. But uh, what is uh, feasible and economically rewarding is, uh, was felt to be breast and colorectal. Thank you, Hani. As usual, excellent talk and inspiration. Uh, I could see that uh, the focus of the strategy is mainly on malignant hematology. The question is, where is the non-malignant hematology from that strategy? Putting in mind all what you know about high prevalences of all non-malignant um, hematology. Very nice question. And really like it. And what I can tell you, there is actually a work on the ground now to establish something related to non-malignant hematology. Uh, it might see the light in the next, uh, at the end of this year, maybe, or before. But this is actually very important. As you said rightly, we have a lot of hemoglobinopathy diseases and other non-malignant uh, related hematology things that need to be catered for. And there is, there is work on the ground on, for this, for sure. Okay, thanks, Dr. Hani. Uh, so, Dr. Yasser. Um, thank you, Dr. Hani. It's a fantastic presentation. One of the uh, very important issues that uh, the cost of uh, treatment now are increasing. Do we have any strategy for the gene therapy or uh, uh, cell therapy in Saudi Arabia that we can do something for this? Sure. Uh, so, Beginning of April, April 2nd and 3rd, there was actually uh, a big workshop for oncology in, from all sectors. Uh, and one of the points that was addressed was actually CAR T therapy and also advances uh, in medicine as well. And uh, one of the recommendations that came out of that uh, workshop was actually the necessity to establish X. CAR therapy for sure in Saudi Arabia, and that is actually top priority, and there is recommendation for that, uh, and there will be a support for that. And also, uh, as it's not a strong recommendation that came out of that workshop for gene therapy, but definitely for CAR T therapy, this is going to see the light, uh, I'm hoping, within 2020. Uh, this workshop is, ha is, is actually an, an annual thing that uh, has happened over the past few years, and hoping that we achieve what we recommended this year. Next year, this uh, recommendation is going to come up on the list as actually gene therapy, inshallah. Okay, so uh, thanks, Dr. Hani.